I hope you're having a great time and learning lots of cool stuff at KringleCon so far. My name is Eric Persley. I'm a technical engineer at CounterHack, and I'm very happy to be speaking at KringleCon this year. In this talk, I'll be giving an introductory lesson on analyzing PowerShell logs using built-in tools and methods. A little more about myself. Uh, relative to the rest of the CounterHack team and probably some of the other speakers, I'm fairly new to cybersecurity. But in the five years I've been working in the industry, I've gained both red and blue team experience. I'm a cyber warfare operator at the Air National Guard, where I do vulnerability assessments and incident response for state government and military networks. And I joined the counterhack team this year, where I do penetration testing and challenge creation for the holiday hack challenge. So more specifically, I'll be talking about why enabling PowerShell logs is important, why knowing how to use built-in tools is useful, and I'll be giving a demonstration for or of log analysis using Event Viewer and PowerShell. Just so I don't keep you here too long so you can get back to questing, uh, this is meant to be introductory, to introduce you to these concepts and methods so you're aware of them and if you're interested, can research and practice more. And who knows, you may even need to pull these out of your fancy bag of holding to solve a challenge on your quest. So why is enabling PowerShell logging important? Well, there is a very common attack technique called living off the land, where attackers use native or legitimate software that is already installed on the victim's machine for their nefarious goals. Using legitimate software enables the attackers to better blend in and bypass antivirus signatures uh, and intrusion prevention and detection systems. PowerShell isn't named what it is for no reason. It's powerful and has extremely broad functionality from basic commands to running lengthy complex scripts. Uh, attackers love it and use it frequently um, because it's often not locked even when command prompt is, which happens more than you'd think. Why lock command prompt, but allow the more capable option? I don't know, it just, it's never made any sense to me. PowerShell also executes commands from memory, uh, which leaves no trace or artifacts behind, unless we enable logging. Uh, here's a few examples of attack tools that are based off or used within PowerShell. These tools were intended for ethical purposes, but like many others, are a double-edged sword and are also used maliciously. They're very well known at this point, so most AV software will catch and block them, but they can be obfuscated to bypass that, in which case having PowerShell logs enabled would be very beneficial. And as you probably noticed, I included PowerShell itself here. Um, I noted a few basic commands that you might look for when analyzing the logs. Uh, including those that will create new users for persistence, run scripts and remote commands, list folder contents and read files, uh, and also create remote uh, sessions for things like file transferring. Um, okay, so enabling PowerShell logs is good, but why is it good to know how to analyze them using built-in tools? The answer comes down to you should always have a backup plan uh, ideally, we'd have access to something that says, you know, all your logs are belong to me and ingests every log that's generated and makes analysis way easier. Um, sometimes these even do some level of analysis for us, but there are going to be times where these are not available. As an example, on a recent mission with my Air Guard unit, uh, the mission partner was forwarding logs to a collector, but only minimal information was being ingested, um, not enough to really do what we needed to do. So we went into every individual server, uh, pulled the logs, and used Deep Blue CLI, which is a tool created by Sans's own Eric Conrad um, in PowerShell to quickly parse the logs for possible malicious activity, uh, and then used the Event Viewer to further investigate any hits we got. If attackers are living off the land, uh, defenders should know how to as well. Uh, and for log analysis, that's where Event Viewer and PowerShell come in. It's more it's a more manual process, so it does take longer, uh, but these tools are installed on every Windows machine by default. And if you have any kind of information on what uh, you're looking for, finding these logs, finding the logs you need can be done much quicker. All right, let's jump into the demonstration. 
First thing we need to do is open Event Viewer and PowerShell. Under our search bar, Event Viewer. And we'll open PowerShell as well. Admin. Well, this prompt loads. There it is. Back to Event Viewer, open saved log. And give it its own special folder over here under saved logs. First thing we need to do is narrow down our search. As you can see here, we have 688 events. And um, realistically, that's not a whole lot. Uh, in a real environment, you'd probably see a lot more. Um, but Regardless, 688 is still a lot, and we still need to uh, filter some things out, uh, especially if, like in our case, we have no Intel to work off of other than find the thing. Um, one place to start uh, to narrow down which logs we're looking at uh, would be determining the date of the attack, uh, when the attack took place. So one way we can do that is to right-click here, the date and time column, and then select group events by this column. Uh, start us down here at the bottom. So if we scroll all the way up, we can see here there's new headers uh, with the dates. We'll just minimize these. And here we can see uh, there's three dates here and the number of events within each date. Now to do the same thing in PowerShell is a little more complex. Uh, so first we're going to cd to the directory where our logs are. And then in the interest of time, I'm just going to paste in the command. So what this is doing is getting everything within our, our log file, essentially catting it out. We're piping that to a where object, which says where uh, an item matches a date in this format, and this is regex. Uh, and then we're piping that to a for each. So for each object within here, uh, we're splitting it on the space. And then we're piping that to a group object, which is just the easiest way uh, to get a count of each resulting, resulting object. And here you can see we have the three dates and the same counts as we saw in Event Viewer. And this, you can just ignore that. We could probably refine this command a little bit more so we don't get this, but for our purposes, it's not really necessary. A typical process for analysis is looking for outliers, such as the group that has either the least or most events, and combine that with context and some critical thinking. In this case, December 26th has by far the most events and is a date of significance, so that's probably a good place to start. Let's keep filtering these down since smaller numbers are easier to work with. Um, as you can see, everything here is the same except for the event IDs and the task categories. So just having a closer look down through each one in the general pane here where the details are. Uh, for me, the most interesting thing is this one because it shows the actual command. And it looks like the event ID is 4104. So let's create a filter for this event ID. And we'll go ahead and collapse these first. Now let's take a look through these events. All right, so here we see a variable. Um, variables start with a dollar sign. So that's a good character to search for to see what they were doing with these variables. So we'll go ahead and click on the Find button here. Enter the dollar sign. And we'll click on Find Next. Okay. 
So far, so good. Nothing too nefarious. There, it looks like they were adding content to the naughty nice list. Not necessarily nefarious, but something to keep in mind. Now, here we see uh, the dollar sign that was not used in a variable. Um, and this is where PowerShell comes in handy because uh, find will show us everywhere the dollar sign is, not just where it's being used to create a variable. Um, now with PowerShell, we can use regex in order to better search for when the dollar sign was used for variable creation. Something to keep in mind is that Windows logs are listed in reverse chronological order. So in order to more easily analyze them in PowerShell, we're first going to reverse that so that they are in chronological order. And to do that, we're going to create a variable that has the contents of the logs um, within it. And then we are going to reverse that order. And now this chrono variable, short for chronological, will contain all of the logs uh, in correct chronological order. Since variable creation is likely at the start of the line, we're going to pipe the logs into a select string and then use the regex pattern, which basically says that uh, look for patterns where the dollar sign is at the beginning of the line. And then we pipe it to a more uh, in case there's a, a bunch of results so we can go page by page uh, and review it. So it looks like there's only a few results here. We have a couple simple text variables. And then we have the contents of the naughty nice list being stored in a variable. Uh, we have that twice, so they must have uh, changed it at some point. And then we see them adding the contents of the naughty nice list back into the naughty nice list. Um, so this must have been edited at some point. So let's find that again and this remote script block, it looks like it's empty, so that can be uh, ignored. So let's go back and see what they did here with this naughty nice list. Back up to the top. Find the add content again. There it is. Close this window. Now we're just going to scroll up to see if we see something interesting, such as this. We have the person putting Grinch equals nice into the naughty nice list. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a little suspicious because we all know that the Grinch should probably be labeled naughty. So we can either pivot and look for Grinch, or we can continue looking at the naughty nice list. And my thought process is let's finish uh, the analysis of the list, and then we can keep Grinch in mind for later. So what we'll do is go back up to the top, click on find again, and then do a search for naughty nice. All right, get content. They're reading it. Okay, so here we see that they have deleted it. We've seen that this potential attacker is editing, deleting, and probably creating new versions of important files. So let's go into PowerShell and see everything they may have done with the naughty nice list. We're again going to use our chrono variable, which is just the, the logs in chronological order. We're going to pipe those to a select string, and this time we're going to search for naughty nice list dot text. Okay, now we have this parameter binding line in here. Uh, it's a little 
messy, so let's go ahead and clean that up. Select string again, and this time enter parameter splat, so parameter and then anything after parameter it will be included, and then we're going to give it a not match to filter it out. Uh, it doesn't look like they did much with it, so they stored the contents into this variable and did it again, deleted it, uh, they put that Grinch equals nice into it, and then they added the original contents uh, back into the list. Now, this you know seems like an important, pretty important file um, that was altered. Uh, so this is definitely a finding that if this were an actual investigation, I would uh, report to the customer. Since they've showed that they're not afraid to delete files, just for good measure, we should go ahead and make sure that nothing else was deleted. So we will pipe the chronological logs into a select string again, and we'll tell it every line with delete at the beginning of the line, since as we can see here, uh, the delete command is at the beginning. And we'll give it the context argument of 1-1, one, one, and that just says, show me uh, one line before and one line after the line that contains delete, just so we get some additional information along with it. All right, looks like there's only this one result, which we've already seen, uh, but again, this time we have some extra context. We see the date, time, um, the application that was ran, the event ID, uh, as well as the description of the event ID. So a little bit of extra information, um, a little bit more than this. All right, I think we've completed the analysis on the naughty nice list. Doesn't seem like there's anything more to find. So let's pivot uh, back over to our Grinch finding. We'll go back into Event Viewer, close this. Back to the top, do another find for Grinch. All right, we see them labeling themselves as nice. Already seen that. Now, here's something new. We see them adding themselves uh, as a user onto the system. This says not Grinch, but they're not very clever. We know it's the Grinch. Uh, we'll keep Going to here, looks like they did it a few times, uh, probably because they were doing the password function incorrectly. And it looks like that's going to be it. Yep, no more Grinch findings. And then just to demonstrate that in PowerShell, we would again do a select string. This time we'll search for Grinch. And we see these parameter bindings. We can ignore those. Um, looks like we get the same things that we saw in Event Viewer. So we could spend some more time digging through these logs. There may be other things to find. But for now, I think we found enough. We found some things to report. Um, so that'll conclude the demonstration. Hopefully it was a good uh, you know, kind of introductory demo on how you can use both Event Viewer and PowerShell to complement each other uh, in an invest in, in investigation. If um, you know there, you don't have any other uh, more fancy, more robust tools. Again, this is meant to be introductory, so this was a simple scenario, and analysis isn't always going to be this easy. But hopefully this showed you that at least basic analysis can be done using basic pre-installed tools and helps should you find yourself needing it during your adventures. Thank you very much for attending my talk. Please do check out the resources. There's some really good stuff there, including how to get PowerShell logging up and running. Uh, thanks again, and enjoy the rest of your time at KringleCon.